What does it actually mean to be a fluent English speaker? This seems like a simple question, but the answer may be a little bit more complicated than you expect. In this video, we're going to talk about this question, and we're also going to go out onto the street and talk to some native English speakers and see how much they know about the English you may have learned in school. Nouns, verbs, prepositions, that kind of stuff. But before we do that, I want to share something with you. I want to share something that I've noticed because I've been teaching English for a long time. One thing that I've noticed is that the people who, the English language learners, who focus more on studying grammar, who focus more on learning English from books, especially English majors, interestingly, those people tend to be, or tend to, struggle more with spoken English, with communicating in English, which is interesting, right? You would expect people who study more grammar to be better. It's not usually the case. It's not usually like that. It's interesting. So I'd like you to keep that in mind as we go out into Times Square and quiz native English speakers on how much they know about technical English, especially English grammar. I have no example, idea. For example, on, at, uh, four, two, <laughs> TWO or TO? TWO. <laughs> no. Is he right? <laughs> Preposition. Preposition. <laughs> Yellow. Dark. Oh, uh, fuck, I forgot this. He is very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me. Oh, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, but you actually do. Because if I say, that's the lady who stole my bag. That's my brother who is not very smart. <laughs> that's my sister who's an overachiever. <laughs> uh, that's the guy who makes the ice cream. <laughs> awesome. awesome. <laughs> that's the building where... Spider-Man <laughs> Active and passive voice. I robbed the bank. Why is he got this? The bank was robbed by you. Nice. I don't remember it. <laughs> um. The bank will be robbed by me. Will you come up with this stuff? <laughs> The lady just farted. Perfect. <laughs> no idea. Alright. She puked. You got it exactly right. You got it exactly right. So is that a surprise? Is it a surprise that native English speakers struggle with what a preposition is? The interesting thing is they were able to make examples after I made an example. Oh, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know that. It seems, it seems a little surprising maybe at first if you look at it as someone who maybe has studied English for a long time in school. But if you think about it from the perspective of a native English speaker, it's not weird at all. I had to learn a lot of the technical words related to English when I started teaching English. I still don't know, for example, the phonetic symbols that a lot of people who learn English know and memorize. I don't know. So the reason I'm making this video is to share a different perspective with you so that you can think about your English language journey differently from the perspective of a native English speaker. So how do native English speakers become fluent in English? Well, they're born into a, a place where everyone around them is speaking English and so they are immediately immersed in the language. 
everybody around them is speaking it. It's on TV, it's on the news, they hear it everywhere. And then as they develop their language skills, right, they start using it, they start having conversations. And it just happens naturally. So think of yourself more as a kid growing up and think about how you can surround yourself in the language so that you're able to get it in many different ways. Read, watch movies, listen to podcasts. All of this is a great way to have immersion if you're not living in a native English speaking country. So instead of thinking of your English language learning journey as a step-by-step -step thing, instead of studying grammar from a book, yeah, you can do that too. It's better to jump into it like a swimming pool, splash around, expose yourself to as much as you can, immerse yourself in it, and see what you have to do to move forward. Try stuff. Don't worry about sounding dumb or sounding weird. Don't stress about it. Just do it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable and confident you will get. And that's the only way to get there. If you're not afraid, you're going to build confidence more quickly. And when you do that, you're going to sound more natural more quickly. You're going to build good speaking habits more quickly, just like learning to swim in a swimming pool. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time.